the world is going through changes. Changes happening at a speed that we have never seen before. This is leading to disruption, chaos, panic, fear, hysteria, and a turbulent economy and marketplace. How do you protect your wealth in a turbulent world? How do you invest for cash flow in alternative assets to escape the rat race in times of uncertainty? How do you decentralize yourself, your family, your community, your business, and your investments to become sovereign and escape the matrix? If you are looking for strategies, tactics, and techniques to escape the rat race and matrix, you are in the right place. My name is MC Lobsher, and this is Cashflow Ninja. This is Cashflow Ninja. I'm MC Lobsher. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Cashflow Ninja and spending your most valuable resource or time once again with me on the show. Everything Cashflow Ninja is at CashflowNinja.com. That's CashflowNinja.com. When you go to CashflowNinja.com, you'll find three different podcasts, Cashflow Ninja, Cashflow Investing Secrets, and Reset Investing Secrets. You can also grab a copy of my book, The 21 Best Cashflow Niches. You could subscribe to my monthly newsletter, The Best Cashflow Niches Newsletter, in which I share one brand new well research Cashflow Niche every month with subscribers. And you can also sign up for my mastermind, Cashflow Nirvana, which was created for business owners and investors that's looking to protect and build wealth during turbulent times. In 2020, the Great Reset was kicked off by COVID-19. And uh, front and center of the Great Reset has been the World Economic Forum, which is headed and chaired by Klaus Schwab. Now, the World Economic Forum is a think tank, a non-governmental organization based out of Davos, Switzerland. And this is where this phrase, the Great Reset, came from. Uh, Klaus Schwab wrote a book, COVID-19 and the Great Reset, where he basically shared with the world what was going on, what is happening, why it was happening, and his vision um, for, for the world uh, in the in the coming years, this book laid out the intentions of the global elite, the ruling class, uh, their objectives, their targets, and the outcomes which they want to achieve. Um, and since the the Great Reset was was uh, kicked off with the uh, COVID nineteen, the world has been heading from one crisis to another. And as I've shared on the show before, the reason for that is, is that the Great Reset is a process in which all of the systems that the world currently operates on and relies on are in the process of collapsing. It's a controlled demolition, and it is controlled by the ruling class, the elite, and most of, of uh, the uh, direction of this Great Reset comes straight out of Davos Switzerland, the World Economic Forum. The reason why it's been done in a controlled uh, manner is because when you can control the collapse of these systems, then you can roll out the new systems which the world will be operating on once the old ones are no longer functional. Now, during all of this, there's a ton of disruption, there's chaos, there's panic, there's fear, there's hysteria. It's kind of crazy times, right? But during times like this, times of great turbulence, there's incredible opportunities for those that understand what's happening, why it's happening, and what comes next. So um, in my search for solutions to all of these problems and challenges that exist out there, I came across John Bush with the Love Free Academy. And John and his team um, has put out some incredible content with regards to solutions for these turbulent times. And they've also got a ton of educational um, uh, content, courses, and then also summits. And he's also involved in a lot of other projects, which one I would highly recommend you check out. It's the Freedom Cell Network, where like-minded folks with shared values um, meet up. And, and they're focusing 
on solutions to all of the crazy things that are happening out there. So if you're looking to learn more about what's happening, why it's happening, what comes next, and then also figuring out solutions to decentralize yourself, your family, your um, community, your business, and your investments during these times of turbulence, uh, John uh, Bush is a great resource for that. John, great to connect and great to have you on the show. Hey, thanks so much for having me. Looking forward to chatting with you. So for um, we have listeners and viewers uh, all, over, all over the world. For those folks not familiar with you and what you do, can you please uh, give me a little bit of uh, your background and your journey and share that with us? Okay, sure. So I've been an activist for freedom, peace, and truth for 20 years now. I began to question the official narrative of, of 9-11 back in 2002, caught a documentary, and that kind of led me down the rabbit hole researching the conspiratorial view of history, some of these large uh, institutions and secret societies that have played a major role in influencing world events. Learned about uh, politics and libertarianism in large part from the Ron Paul for President campaign 2007-2008. Uh, leaned heavy into local and state politics, pushing back against the police state and the surveillance state, started a political action committee that's still around to this day uh, here in Central Texas. I was born and raised in Austin, Texas, still here in Central Texas. But even though we had these what seemed like political victories, um, we were simply slowing the growth of tyranny. We weren't creating real freedom for ourselves, our community, our families. And so that's when I started leaning into this idea that in order to create freedom, we need to create new types of institutions, new relationships. We need to lean, in, lean into new technologies. And so we started uh, trading with silver dimes. We started growing our own food, uh, came up with this concept for the Freedom Cell Network, which is basically like an alternative way of organizing ourselves socially, not dependent on government or big government or big corporations. Learned about Bitcoin along the way, became very infatuated with that. Uh, and since then, I started a company called Live Free Academy, and our whole purpose is to help people create more freedom in their lives. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world, but I've found that the more you focus on solutions, the more free you will be and the more prosperous as well. Yeah, that well well said, because I think that, that that's one of the things um, that, uh, yeah, what you focus on grows, right? And uh, one one of the how I came across what you're doing and all the great stuff that 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 you're providing out there in the marketplace is yeah I did you know I saw all these things that were happening and I think most people that are listening or watching to this too have seen things that they would never have even in their craziest uh, dreams or nightmares could have envisioned or <laughs> have had um uh, seen it seen it happen since 2020 right. I think a lot of people started to realize, wow, what just happened and what has been happening since? And it feels like um, the uh, agenda that is globally now pretty much open on display, coming straight out of Davos, Switzerland, that's kind of the center stage for it, right? Sure. The, the, the communication of this agenda, um, it, it's just moving at a frightening speed. So I think, you know, a lot of folks can get caught up in also you know all the negative stuff which it is it's doomy and it's gloomy but the 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 best use of your time is actually focusing on the solutions and it was pretty inspiring to see what 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 you're up to uh, what people are up to in your network and that how solutions uh, based focused you are um so that that that's been that's been great before we get to that could we just touch on like some of the things that Oh, where are we at now? I'd love to get your view, just kind of like big picture. Where are we at right now? Um, where, do, where, where did the, this all come from? And then where do you see this all going next? Okay, so as far as where this all came from, I mean, as a student of history, and again, the conspiratorial view of history, which is in contrast to the idea that things just happen randomly, which most stuff does, but unfortunately there's a powerful group of people from different walks of life, all of them united in their common desire to control other human beings. And so when you understand this conspiratorial view of history, you can kind of get a clear picture of where things are going. Because as you referenced earlier, this is kind of like an open conspiracy. Um, the World Economic Forum, which is one of these 
supranational organizations, uh, NGO, non-governmental organization. They recently launched this campaign called The Great Reset. And essentially, they're aiming to reshape society, reshape the way we do business, reshape the relationship between individuals and government. Uh, they have a big push for social equity. Uh, they like to implement mechanisms of control and surveillance, uh, stating that they're doing it for the benefit of the economy or, uh, sorry, for the benefit of the environment, right? And so when you, you study the Great Reset, you kind of see that this is the same iteration of this classic concept of a new world order, right? And so essentially what they wanna do is centralize power, increase surveillance of human beings. That's both surveillance like Big Brother is watching you style surveillance, social credit score, but also one thing that's extremely alarming is the central bank digital currency. Uh, this will be a digital means of tracking and tracing, analyzing every single one of your financial transactions. And on top of that, uh, through what's known as a smart contract, programmable money will be the reality. So if you go over a certain amount of carbon usage for a given month for your household or even the district that you happen to live in, now all of a sudden they're gonna increase the price of a plane ticket or prohibit you from doing that altogether. Or like we saw with the Canadian trucker movement, uh, they'll shut you out of the banking system altogether. Now, back in 2006 was when I first became aware of this idea that the economy could collapse. And I was crying out from the rooftops, pull your money out of the banks, pull your money out of the stock market. I even remember giving my dad a hard time, like, dad, the economy's gonna crash, pull all your money out of your 401k and IRA and put it into gold and silver. And one thing that was really um, impactful, my dad responded and he's like, you know, John, I could go up in the attic right now and grab a book called How to Profit from the Upcoming Collapse written in 1978. And that was a big eye opener for me because I was just, you know, coming into an understanding of Austrian economics and how this all works and debt and the Federal Reserve Bank. But I realized that it's all just one big, slow, gradual collapse. But in all reality, what I believe to be more likely than a cataclysmic economic collapse, I mean, ultimately, there's got to be a correction someday. But I think more likely the scenario is a gradualism, frog in the boiling pot, Fabian socialism is one way to describe it where slowly but surely we transition away from um, states' rights, uh, democratic republic form of governance into this new technocracy where essentially the rules are set by a scientific elite and society is governed by algorithms, surveillance, and emerging of biology and technology, which is also known as the fourth industrial revolution. So that's where I see where we're at. That's where we've been. If you are intuitive enough, you can kind of see how things are going. These folks that are making big moves like the Klaus Schwabs and the Bill Gates and the Rockefeller family, uh, they're very influential and successful at what they do. And so what we propose as, a, as opposed to just researching, writing about it, screaming from the rooftop, uh, we exit those systems that we disagree with and we build new systems. I want to take a moment to share something very important right now. Are you trying to figure out how to protect your savings from the banking collapse, which has already started, and the coming financial crisis? Most banks will fail. Deposits that are not insured by the FDIC will be lost, and there will be bank bail-ins. And this collapse in the banking system will lead to chaos in the financial system. Banks also provide loans to real estate investors. So what do you think is going to happen to lending in the event of a banking and a financial crisis? You can be proactive and position your savings to protect it and also have access to it to use it to buy discounted assets by positioning it in your own banking system through the infinite banking concept strategy. Producers Wealth has put together a presentation at yourownbankingsystem.com where you will learn how to position capital outside of the banking system and the Wall, Wall Street casino, just like the ultra wealthy, to protect it and create a pool of tax-free liquid capital to capitalize on the massive opportunity to buy discounted assets, which is coming. 
You can access the presentation at yourownbankingsystem.com. That's yourownbankingsystem.com. We have this idea of how things happen. You know, if you you pick your country, you know, uh, whether it's Venezuela or whether it's Zimbabwe, you know, pick your country that is, you know, I I would say uh, collapsed, quote unquote collapsed. You know, how did it happen? Well, it didn't happen overnight, not like the marketing pieces, which we see in our world too, uh, describes, right? You don't wake up one morning and then all of a sudden, you know, all hell just broke broke loose and everything just collapsed. It's kind of the slow burn, this boiling frog kind of analogy. And I think, um, you know, South Africa is a perfect example of that, where in most parts of the country, there are now areas where they don't have electricity because of power grid failures for 12 to 13 hours a day, and sometimes even longer, in, depending on what part you live in, some areas less. But that didn't happen overnight. This has been 30 years. This has been three decades. And now you're in a, in a situation where a lot of people would look at it and say, it's on the brink of collapse uh, because it's been going on for th- you know three decades. So I think that's a great point that you, that, that you make because a lot of people, they hear a lot of fear porn that everything's just going to go to hell in a handbasket tomorrow. It doesn't happen that way. It goes slowly. And because it's happening slowly, recognizing what's happening in your or your environment allows you to position yourself, your family, your community, your business, and your investments to be on the right side of this because there's there's always going to be opportunities in chaos and then also be able to, ca- to capital, capitalize on this. Um, the other thing that I also wanted to share is you know, you'd mentioned this open kind of conspiracy that's there. And it's funny that that word has a bad connotation because of how it's been used in programming of the masses. But it's pretty, I mean, everything that's going on now and everything that you've just mentioned has been openly shared at think tanks. Uh, they, they've they written papers about all of this. It's, it's available. I mean, pick your source, whether you want to go to the World Economic Forum, whether you want to go to the Bank for International Settlements, whether you want to go to the IMF, you know, pick your central bank. They've got papers out about central bank digital currencies. They're ready. They've tested them all. They uh, Some countries, they've even rolled them out, such as Nigeria, right? So all of these things are already there. And, they, you know, big picture too, the, you know, it's 2030, you owe nothing and you will be happy, was kind of the big statement, marketing piece in 2016 by the World Economic Forum. They told you that was coming, which is kind of giving you a view of this new feudalistic society where you have an ID that allows you access to everything else and everything is connected to it, whether it be your driver's license, passport, credit score, social credit score, your carbon footprint, um, every you know everything that you need to basically live on or that, that, that you need will be will be tied to it. So these things are already all documented. Now, again, back to my, my previous point, you can go um, and get really depressed by this or you could relish the opportunity, which you guys have already... Uh, very, very well, um, you know, uh, just demonstrated by saying, listen, let's just start building outside of this. We we, we don't want to be a part of this. Let's figure out how to do things. So can you share some of the, the things that you've shared about how to exit and build new systems? Because most systems that people are going to rely on is in the process of collapsing and there will be new systems taking the place of the old systems. So what 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 have what have been some of the steps that 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 you've taken and that you've shared through your endeavors? Sure. I love I love answering that exact question because really what matters the most more than philosophy or speculation is just practical what do we do? We recognize there's a problem and more and more people do recognize that problem by the way. In the beginning it was very lonely talking about this conspiracy. We, everybody thought we were quacky and kooky. Many people still do, but I believe after COVID-19, they overplayed their hand and a lot of people were like, whoa, this, what we just experienced was really hardcore. Something's up. They're not telling the truth. This whole public health thing is a lie. My friends shared this information that seems to be accurate based on the source material, but then it got censored from social media. Something's not right here. I'm going to dive deeper. Then they go down the rabbit hole, they get quote unquote red pilled, but then many people get black pilled, which means they become apathetic and afraid and overwhelmed, feeling hopeless. And so we, I guess there's this concept of white pilled, and that's what we hope to do. 
And the more that you take action, the more relief you'll feel from these feelings of anxiety and overwhelm. So what we're trying to do overall is abandon systems that are overly centralized, that are coercive. That means like forcing people to do things against their will, government namely, and uh, that are corrupt and replace those systems, institutions, relationships, contractual arrangements with decentralized systems, voluntary systems where you only participate if it benefits you and you can opt out if you so choose, and finally transparent institutions. So uh, a big perfect example, something that we just we lean into recently is this whole idea of exiting the big cities and building community in the country. So we just wrapped up our third X and Build Land Summit. I believe you have a link you can share with your audience if people want to check out the replay for free. Uh, we had all sorts of incredible speakers. Jeff Lawton, the leading permaculture voice. Uh, we had Jack Spierko, Derek Bros, who's my co-collaborator with the Freedom Cell Network and the Greater Reset, our effort to push back on the Great Reset. So the smart cities, the, the big cities are, are where this technocracy agenda is going to be most prevalent. And that's going to be like interconnected, high speed internet, 5G, 6G, transponders, internet of things, uh, locking you down in a specific district. That's this whole 15 minute city concept. So there's already a lot of tyranny traditionally in the cities, but this new wave of technological tyranny known as technocracy is most definitely going to be extremely impactful in the cities. So we're encouraging people to exit the cities connect with your neighbors, buy land, move the RV out onto your friend's property and get in touch with the land, grow your own food, become more self-reliant. You can also exit the banks or at least have an exit plan, right? So I, I like to teach the inside outside game, you know, cause I have a business, multiple businesses. I take credit card payments, I file my 1040 every year. I do the inside game. But I also got the outside game going on. And I know that in the moment, if I need to fully transition to an outside the system life, while it may be difficult, I've at least laid the groundwork and the foundation for me to be able to do that and still provide for my family. So exiting the banks and utilizing decentralized cryptocurrencies, specifically Bitcoin or a privacy coin like Monero, this will enable us to continue to do business with one another uh, once the CBDC system is rolled out exit reliance on the pharmaceutical industrial complex and westernized medicine and start using holistic healing modalities plant medicine get our diets in in line uh, exit government schools considered private schools or homeschooling so and ultimately exit government as a means of organizing ourselves as a means of reaching decisions as a group and start exploring alternative systems decentralized autonomous organizations in the crypto world or the Freedom Cell Network, which we started many years ago, and there's now like 39,000 people participating. It's just a, a way for people to get together, to work together on projects, get one another's backs, uh, and trade with one another as well. So there's a whole wide variety of do it, doing it, and I, I would encourage people to identify where they're most dependent. So for example, during COVID, if somebody had a corporate job and that was all of their income, or if somebody's completely dependent on social security or cashing out of their retirement account, they're retired. And now all of a sudden we have CBDCs or now all of a sudden there's some mandate to take this experimental injection or you lose your job, you're in a difficult position. So I always encourage people to take a self-assessment, identify which areas you're most dependent on the system and slowly but surely begin to decouple from those mechanisms of control so in the event that you're put into a difficult decision spot or you're pressured to do something you don't want to do, it makes the choice all the more easy because you have an escape plan outside of that whole control paradigm. Very well put. Um, a couple of just comments on, on what you just shared. So the first thing is, you know, it, it's impossible at this stage to go into an existing system and change that. It's better to exit and build, build and create your own system and make that system obsolete, kind of the philosophy around around crypto. Um, so th this is this is what you are doing. And then the other thing that I really appreciate that you shared, because a lot of people will listen to this and go, 
oh, well, you know, do I just now sell everything and I just like go fully into the exit and build? No, you just shared that there's an inside and an outside way of doing this. And so you can function and live exactly as you live now. And while there's, while things are, I would say, quote unquote, quiet, there's not a lot going on. Uh, there is, but I mean, like really at what we can see from a major push on about something um, to push the population a certain direction. I, you know, I, I think at this point, at this time of recording, they've taken their foot off the gas pedal. So a lot of folks are going back into complacency. This is a perfect time to look at and ask yourself the question of what systems do I rely on? What And then how do I decentralize myself? How do I build an outside system? Because it's going to be too late when the proverbial, you know, mango hits the fan, when the shit hits the fan, it's going it, it's going to be too late to do it. So if you, you have the opportunity now to do it, to take action today, to function as you're functioning now, but look at the other ways of how can I get more decentralized? How do I decentralize myself, my family, my community, my business, and my investments? We talk about it all the time in our community of that plan B and plan C. Because you you might need you might need all both of them. Plan B, uh, B, C. Yeah, ex ex exactly. Um, and then the other thing that I just want to highlight that you shared is, you want to make decisions, and especially tough ones, when you have options. That's the time to make decisions. There's going to be a time where there's not a lot of options, and you and you're running out of options, and you're running out of time, and you would have. At that particular point in time, you're going to ask yourself, why didn't I take action? Why didn't I make the tough decisions when I had a ton of options? Now I really don't have options. And I think a lot of people might, might have been in that situation, you know, when there were all of these health mandates forced on them, um, you know, by corporations and, and, and their areas of employment, right? Um, and that ties into the different income streams that we talked about too. If you are relying on one income stream, that could be taken away any minute, any second. That's why, I mean, that's why we have the, a show and we talk about different ways to generate cash flow and generate income. So you have to have diversified income streams too. Some thought just on the income piece too that, that you've talked about as well, because that's a very, very important part of it for folks. Yeah, so I recently did this 60-day uh, CBDC exit plan. Um, work it was a series of workshops. We spent 60 days together with hundreds of clients. And the, the basic things I taught were, first of all, you got to get your mind right. Don't operate from a place of fear and reaction. Understand what we're going through. Come up with a plan and believe in your ability to create a better life for yourself both the freedom you enjoy, the quality of life, happiness, which a lot of people overlook, right? And also the, your prosperity. And having mm -hmm. choices has a lot to do with that. Freedom is choice and choices are freedom. Another piece of it was to understand how to use alternative currencies, Bitcoin, Monero, but not just stopping there because, you know, it is digital. Ultimately, if the grid goes down, it'll be back up. If the internet goes down, it'll be back up. You'll still have access to your crypto. But besides the point, you know, alternative currencies like silver, barter, trade networks, even like time currencies. Uh, but a big piece of it also was to become an entrepreneur or at least have an outside the system source of income or some sort of alternative income to your retirement account, to your social security, or to your big corporate paycheck. Uh, and then finally, the final component was let's build the counter economy. Let's identify goods and services that we normally purchase from big corporations or the grocery store, for example, and let's try to buy them from within our community. And so uh, you're right, having alternative income streams, having multiple income streams, having outside the system income streams is fundamentally important. People wanna position themselves. It's important for people to position themselves to where you're kind of nimble and flexible and you're not stuck in one path because ultimately those paths can be leveraged for control. That's the name of the game. Like I said earlier, um, this whole cabal, new world order, whatever you wanna call it, these characters that are hell bent on controlling our lives revealed uh, their, their key strategy. It was already evident through the income tax, especially, it's basically a social engineering scheme in large part, the income tax. 
But they realize like, okay, we're going to use the media in order to manipulate people using fear and anxiety. And we're just going to pound it out. It's just hardcore propaganda, basically a psychological warfare campaign on the public, the entire world public, which is nuts to think about the sheer scale. Yeah. But what, they're like, when that doesn't work, we got to start making it difficult for people to live. We got to start taking away what we see as privileges. We got to start pressuring them. Um, we got to start withholding their ability to earn a living for themselves and their family. And then on top of that, let's institute a social pressure campaign where they start pushing each other and turning on each other for not doing what is the public good, quote unquote, for the podcast audience. So we recognize what their strategy is. That's their strategy. Our strategy is to recognize that, be aware of that and say, okay, knowing that this is their play, they're going to do this in the future. They're going... COVID-19 was just the first implication, the first iteration of this whole agenda. So you, know, you, see, you see the vaccine passports, for example. I could tell early on they were pushing that vaccine so damn hard. It's not even a vaccine, by the way, that I realized like, wait a second, there's something. Up. This whole thing, the whole COVID thing is a marketing campaign to try to push people in to get in this shot. There's reasons why they want to do that. Sheer profit motive is just one of them. But then this whole vaccine passport. Essentially, that's a means of controlling people's freedom of movement. So you have to show some green light in order to enter a particular corridor or go to another side of town or go to the grocery store or coffee shop or your kid's dance recital, for example. It's my belief, and this is not some random belief, it's based on a lot of World Economic Forum desires and their white papers and stuff, that they want to implement this whole vaccine passport program, but add it use it for reducing people's carbon output, which is a total fraud. And so now we see the same program, pressure people, take away privileges, make life difficult for them until they comply. They did it with the shot. They did it with COVID lockdowns, masking. The next thing they're going to do is use that as part of this carbon regime where people are going to have a personal carbon allowance, a PCA. That's the term the World Economic Forum uses. And they're so excited about this little app that tracks your carbon output. So that'll be coupled with the central bank digital currency with a social credit score. And ultimately this vaccine passport checkpoint Charlie system will control where people can and cannot go. So that's coming down the pike. That is going to happen. And unless you get really proactive about architecting your life so as to not get ensnared in this trap, you're going to go along for the ride. And trust me, it ain't going to be pretty. So you're absolutely right. We do need to have alternative sources of income. We do need to craft a life of independence and recognize where it is that we can be easily controlled. I want to take a moment to recognize one of our sponsors, Penumbra Solutions. Live Settlements Investments have allowed financial and banking institutions to not only buy their equity contractually, but also diversify their capital from any economic, market, and geopolitical risk. It's been part of the billion-dollar blueprint followed by institutional investors. If you're an accredited investor, you can also now participate in this vehicle with enormous growth potential. You can watch an informational webinar presented by one of the premier organizations providing live settlement investments, Penumbra Solutions, at CashflowNinja.com forward slash life settlements. That's CashflowNinja.com forward slash life settlements. The password to access that webinar is Penumbra, all lowercase. Um, one of the things that you shared th there is anybody can go what you just shared, uh, look it up. There's white papers on this. The World Economic Forum has talked about this. The same with the Bank for International Settlements, which is the, the central bank. Central bank, they had a white paper out, which I which read through and studied just on the central bank digital currencies, which at that time, as I explained in my community, that they had three different models. Two models, which was basically agreed upon. The one was where central banks will hold the wallets of the population, the citizens in the country. That was the direct kind of like model. The second model, which I think this is the model that it looks like how things are playing out, that this is the model that, that that's the most likely one, which they presented was, well, 
There's about 4,800 banking licenses in the United States. You can't have a CBDC and have wallets with 4,800 banking institutions where citizens then can then you know b do their banking with the, the custodian, which is the bank, right? So you have to eliminate most of these banks and probably have five to 10 of them left at most Fed member banks to kind of have this kind of hybrid model where you do have a custodian uh, in the middle, which is still the banks, you'll know all you know all the names of the Fed member, member banks, whether it's you know whether it's um, J.P. Morgan Chase, Citibank, Bank of America, you know the usual suspects. They will be there. They'll be custodians, and then wallets will be the CBDC wallets will be with them, and then you'll have the population, the citizens. Now, that's just a white paper that they put up. <laughs> you know, so now when you see this happen, it's like, well, they kind of tell you this was what what they we're gonna do. So you have to take out all the small and the regional banks so and, and, and basically drive deposits from those banks into the bigger banks to eventually eliminate those and then consolidate it. So that's what's going on right now. So when you just shared that, too, what, what, with the digital ID and the passports that we're talking about, it's, it's there for anybody to see. So now what are we going to do with this? You know, one of the things that, that I would suggest that you shared already is make a list of all the systems just think of daily you know what do you rely on the power grid that's a big one right so you need power water and then when the water and and, and food so when the electric the electrical grid goes down there's no electricity there's no water and there's no food then you have people behaving badly so you're going to have to find a way to protect yourself your community is going to have to find a way to protect itself and you can go down the line then you know we talked about your the financial side which is the banking side your business your investments you could do this these exercises and kind of go through all this and see where you're most vulnerable and start taking action um by becoming less dependent on those systems that are in the process of collapsing and less vulnerable yeah and you know a a lot of people struggle with this because there's many people that are stuck in their head. Um, now I try to focus a lot on mindset. So there's all these mechanics, how to do this, how to set up a Bitcoin. For example, I could teach people how to set up a Bitcoin wallet all day. And I've gotten very good at making it as simple as possible, step by step, make sure you back it up, write down the seed phrase, blah, blah, blah. But if people aren't able to overcome an insecurity with technology in general, especially uh, boomers and seniors that may not be as comfortable with technology as younger generations, there's no point in even trying to teach somebody if they have these internal limiting beliefs. Just the same, we're like, hey man, the cities are getting really weird and then there's this crazy techn technocracy being implemented and there's surveillance cameras and there's transponders and they want to control your movement and track and trace where you happen to be. So you, you really should consider moving out of the city and buying land or renting a place in the rural small town or whatever. But if people are like, well, I've never done good with money, so I don't know that I could come up with a down payment, right? People do these like mental gymnastics and instead of understanding the root cause of why they're not acting they have these cover causes like well they're just going to shut down the internet or that they'll just ban bitcoin or i can't buy land because klaus schwab said we'll own nothing and be happy they're just going to take my land the united nations blue helmets are going to march in which is like try try to do that in texas that ain't happening anywhere especially in more conservative uh states here in the u.s so one thing i try to encourage people to do is like just get real with yourself and identify what's holding you back from transforming your life. Because in spite of mass tyranny and chaos and economic problems, me personally, like I'm living my best life. I've never been more free. In fact, there was a dramatic shift in my income and I can point it back first to 20, 2019 after I started getting following Grant Cardone. I had this incredible month in February. We went to a conference in Acapulco, Anarchapulco, and uh, sold a bunch of Kratom. It's this health product that I sell with my company, Bray Botanicals. Uh, we rented this big mansion on the beach, and I rented out beds per night, and then that filled up. So we rented a condo that was three stories across the street, and that filled up and had my whole trip paid for, made a profit. Uh, and then in March of 2020, which was at the height of the lockdown, when all that first started, I had the best month ever. 
Because while everyone was locked down in fear, blaming the government in victim mode for things not working out for them, I was like, they're going to lock down everybody but essential workers. I'm going to make myself essential. I'm going to go from gas station to gas station selling colloidal silver-based hand sanitizer, and I'm going to make a killing doing it. So ultimately, more often than not, we can point our fingers at Klaus Schwab, Bill Gates, the New World Order, Joe Biden, but ultimately, we're the only one holding ourselves back from living our best life. And if enough people recognize that, and if we get away from the reactionary politics, screaming at government buildings, arguing with our family over Thanksgiving dinner, so much so that we turn them away from us and now they don't even want to hang out with us anymore. And we start exiting and building. If enough of us can adopt this sovereign mindset and implement the right strategy for change, I genuinely believe we can radically transform the world and hopefully future generations don't have to contemplate all this crazy stuff. They can enjoy the finer things in life, like a fine wine and a ribeye steak and contemplating philosophy. So that's, that's our ultimate goal is to set future generations up for success so they don't have to worry about this psychopathic cabal that's aiming to control us all. That's a great message. Uh, and by the way, that's happened in our community too. Over the since since 2020, I mean, there are things that I saw, just incredible things. And, you know, just living the 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 your best life is is was kind of the motto. There's people that I mean, they've seen weight loss that they never thought was possible. There are people that found each other, you know, families. Uh they've they've gotten married and had children since. I mean, there's just so many things that has happened. And, you know, it comes back to what you said earlier, the mindset. Mm -hmm. it, it's not that something's being done to you. It's just this is the environment that you're operating in. And you can choose whether to make this the best time ever right. or whether to just kind of like sleepwalk with the rest of the folks during this time. And unfortunately, it's going to be a very bad sleepwalk. And you're going to wake up to a nightmare when you do that sleepwalk. Um, I want to touch on one of your projects because there's a lot of folks that might think, you know, yeah, I, I have the right mindset. I'm looking to take action. I believe in my ability to figure things out. I want to become more sovereign. I might be financially free. And that was kind of like the, the mission of our show when I started this in 2016 was to help people become financially free through cash flow investing. And mm -hmm. it's since taken kind of like a second layer to the mission of helping people become more sovereign by escaping the matrix. Okay. So obviously having the financial piece first gives you a lot more options than not having it, right? But I think a lot of people realized in 2020 that they're financially free, but they're not sovereign. Two completely different things. Sure. One of your projects, the Freedom Cell Network, is a great, great resource. I mean, when I saw that, I'm like, this is incredible. It's almost like a superpower for mapping out your outside of the system kind of like life and becoming less dependent on the systems that you use daily. Can you share just uh, what's going on with the Freedom Cell Network and what folks will find when, when they see that? Sure. So it's the Freedom Cell Network is a decentralized group of people that care about freedom, that recognize there's some pretty big problems in the world, but we are completely oriented towards solutions. And that's even part of our guidelines. If there's groups or the website that we created, anybody can join at freedomcells.org. Freedom cells, like a cell in the body, freedomcells.org. It's like, if you gotta promote your political campaign, if you're trying to get people to sign this petition at change.org, this is not the place for that. This is the place to find people in your local area meet up in real life and work together on common goals. So some of the things that people in the community are doing are hosting permaculture workshops, doing what we call a perma blitz, where a group of people in a certain area get together and they build out some garden beds on this guy's property. He hosts, maybe has a couple drinks, cooks up some barbecue. Two weeks later, everyone's like, hey, that worked really well. Let's go do it at your property. And so we're all just supporting each other's self-reliance goals. A lot of people are finding one another, pulling their kids out of government school and forming homeschool co-ops. Relationships are being met. People are doing business with one another. We recently bought half a pig slaughtered and butchered uh, for, for some Bitcoin from one of the local people in our community. We do um, beef shares where we all pitch in and purchase half a cow, distribute it out to the people that were shareholders. So it's essentially some good people 
uh, that are working together in order to create more freedom, prosperity, and community in their own lives. 100% solutions oriented. We have very little tolerance for sharing articles, posting videos, speculating about the new world order. The idea is like, let's assume we all recognize there's a problem in this world, even if some people aren't fully aware of the depths of it all. Go do your research over there, figure stuff out. But when you come to this space that we've created, it's a container deliberately organized to help empower people to lead their best lives, to create real freedom. Ultimately, what our big picture goal is, and again, there's just under 40,000 of us globally. Chances are, if you live in a decently populated area, there's people in your neck of the woods. Uh, ultimately, our goal is to replace government and big corporations as a means of organizing ourselves harmoniously, trading amongst ourselves, defending ourselves, having a system of justice, growing our own food, creating our own counter economy. Anybody can join, it's absolutely free. Uh, you go to freedomcells.org, you fill out a little questionnaire, share what some of your skills are, what you're hoping to look for, what you're hoping to get out of the network. And then we invite you to put an address on a map. Now, don't put your home address, put a coffee shop down the street that you could meet up at or the park down the road and then you get to access the map. And on the map, you can see other people that have put little pins. You can click on their pin and see what their skills are, what they're looking for, and invite them to go grab coffee or do a Zoom meeting as an icebreaker. There's also a bunch of cells, which are these small groups we encourage people to organize in. Those are all over the map as well. So if anybody's feeling isolated or alone, they're the only people that think like they do and they haven't been able to connect with others, I highly encourage you to check out the Freedom Cell Network freedomcells.org. I want to take a moment to recognize one of our sponsors. My friend Dave Zook says, you can be conventional or you can be wealthy. Pick one. At The Real Asset Investor, Dave and his team bring their investors high-yield investment opportunities across several asset classes for cash flow, tax impact, and equity growth. He and his team are one of the top five ATM operators in the country and they have an investment opportunity available to accredited investors right now in the ATM space. To learn more about their ATM funds that produce tax-free cash flow, visit therealassetinvestor.com. That's therealassetinvestor.com. There's a lot of educational stuff that you put out for folks that just want to get started. And, you know, there's even a summit that the replay is available for folks if they if they want to check that out uh, for free. Can you share some more information on that? And then also, you know, some of the other places that people can follow you um, and just stay involved with all of the projects that you're involved with. Sure, sure, sure. So, yeah, we just put together this incredible event. It was three days long. We had incredibly powerful speakers. Uh, we had Michael Reynolds, the Earthship guy, Jack Spierko for the Survival Podcast, Curtis Stone, he's up in Canada uh, doing an off-grid community. He just did this course recently about finding the perfect homestead. Patrick Wood, he's arguably the nation's or the world's leading expert on technocracy and smart cities. Um, I spoke, we had Mike Colomb, who's an expert on private membership associations, an alternative way of organizing that's outside the system entirely. And so it was three days. The whole thing is like people recognize the cities are not the place to be. We have more freedom. We have more connection to the land. We can create better communities outside of these big cities. But some people don't know how to do it. They're feeling a little overwhelmed by the whole idea of buying land and being coming more self-sufficient, doing the homestead thing. So we try to really empower people, inspire people and teach people how to get from here to there. So uh, we're giving away the first day and a half, all the replays for free. We really do a nice, highly polished production. So people will really enjoy the quality of uh, the content that they'll get. They can follow the links you'll provide to access that watch for free. If they want to go deeper. They can get access to the replays and a bunch of really in-depth workshops that took place on the third day of the event. So definitely check that out. That's our third time to do this event. And each year it just gets bigger and better. Uh, very active on Twitter. People can follow me at John B. Live Free, at John B. Live Free. And then finally, we do a daily email newsletter. I uh, would love for people to hop on board. It's always about tips and strategies, really cool stories from my life and the people around me. Uh, people can sign up for that free email newsletter at livefree.academy slash email, livefree.academy slash email. Awesome. And the link to that summit is at cashflowninja.com forward slash exit and build. That is cashflowninja.com 
forward slash exit and build. So, uh, John, one question I ask all of the first time guests, because the show, we talk a lot about business. We talk about investing. We talk about uh, cash flow and sovereignty, but it's also about leaving a legacy. So if you cannot pass on any money to future generations and you're only allowed to pass on three principles to them to help them create an amazing life, uh, achieve happiness and success, what, what would they be? Three principles. Okay. Uh, persistence. I think persistence is probably one of the key characteristics of successful people. I have a couple successful businesses now, um, you know, big following, big movement that we've helped to create. But if people took a look at my past, you'll see a graveyard of dead businesses and organizations and a lot of struggle, a lot of struggle, a lot of poverty, getting kicked out of apartments, living in a broken down converted school bus. So I just want to encourage people and I would encourage future generations if, if you feel like you're struggling, keep at it, persist, get your mind right, take massive action. And ultimately, you only fail if you give up. So persistence, I would say. Uh, I'm a big fan of law of attraction. What you focus on creates your reality. Where your attention goes, energy flows. So rather than coming to things from a reactionary paradigm and focusing so much attention on the ugly things and the darkness in the world, focus on the beauty, the wonder, the harmony, the relationships you have. Be grateful for what you have. Um, Paint a clear picture of what it is that you want out of life, who it is that you want to become, the legacy you want to live, the wealth that you want to have, the relationships you want to have with your family, your significant other. Focus really clearly on that. Get real clear, write it down, draw pictures, whatever, do a vision board. And then in the present moment, ask yourself, are my actions, habits, thoughts in alignment with the person that I want to be? If they are, lean into it. If they're not, then change your actions in the present moment. And it's only a matter of time before you become that person you want to be. Um, and then finally, I would say, you know, a lot of people in our community have a tendency to like destroy relationships because they learn about this conspiracy. They get red pilled and then they have like some sense of superiority over the quote unquote normies. Or they just like word vomit all over their loved ones. And it's clear the loved ones don't want to hear it. They're not going to change their lives. They're not all of a sudden going to stop soaking up everything they watch on Fox News or CNN. Sometimes there's more important things in life than being right or educating people about conspiracy. Hanging out with your family, enjoying quality time, sitting back and relaxing for once are all really important things. That's something I struggle with myself. What's the point of working so hard and running all these businesses if I can't take some time off with my wife to go visit her family in Arizona, for example, which we're doing this weekend. So um, focus on really what's important, which I think is having strong, healthy relationships with those that are closest to us. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your journey and your knowledge and just providing so much value for all of my listeners and my viewers. It's been great, great to connect and having you on. Hey, thanks for having me. This went really well. I really appreciate you. And thank you to you, the listener and the viewer, for spending your most valuable resource, your time once again with me on the Cashflow Ninja. Everything Cashflow Ninja is at CashflowNinja.com. CashflowNinja.com. You could check out my three podcasts, Cashflow Ninja, Cashflow Investing Secrets, and Reset Investing Secrets at CashflowNinja.com. And you can also grab a copy of my book, The 21 Best Cashflow Niches. Subscribe to my newsletter, The Best Cashflow Niches Newsletter, and join my mastermind, Cashflow Nirvana. It's all at CashflowNinja.com. Until next time, live infinitely. This presentation is for educational and informational purposes only. The information being presented and considered does not consider your particular financial objectives or situation, and it does not make personalized recommendations. This material is not intended to replace the advice of a qualified tax and legal advisor or other qualified professionals, and you should not use the information in place of a customized consultation with a licensed professional regarding your specific personal financial objectives, situation, and needs. We believe the information provided is reliable, but we do not guarantee its accuracy, timeliness, or completeness.